Hello, I am Pastor Ernest L. Dees with Agape Holistic Life Changing Ministries. As always, I am humbled and honored to share with you what thus says the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious Father, O oh, gracious Father, I thank you for your goodness, your kindness, and your mercy. Lord God, I pray that you have mercy upon this entire nation. O oh God, let the hearers of your word, O oh God, receive your word. This we pray and we thank you. In Christ Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to take a moment to publicly thank my wife and family for being very loving and supportive down through the years. During the lean years, as well as the better years. I thank God for the membership and staff here at Agape, for their continued moral, physical, spiritual, and financial support. It is definitely not taken for granted. What can I say about the clergy? They are some preaching preachers and teaching teachers. May God bless them richly. I cannot forget about our friends and listening audience. I thank God for you and for your continued support and prayers. I hope this fast we are on be a blessing not only to Agape, but to our community of listeners as well. We want to talk today from the thought, a battle for the soul. A battle for the soul. Also, as always, we want you to keep in mind our subtopic, Jesus is coming. And he is coming. He may be delaying his coming just for you, giving you another opportunity to say yes to his will, yes to his way, and to answer the call of God upon your life. I want to read our scripture lesson today coming from two scriptures, first found in St. Luke chapter 12, verse 15 through 21, reading from the New King James Version, also Jude chapter 1, verse 9. Luke reads on this wise, Take heed and beware of curseness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plenty. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. <clears throat> Take your ease. Eat. Drink and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Turn with me, if you will, <clears throat> to Jude, 
chapter 1, verse 9, reads on this wise. Yet Michael, the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke you. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Now, in times like these, it appears that virtually every day we encounter situations or circumstances that appear to be uncharted waters or uncharted territory. We never seen anything like it before. We do not know who is real and who isn't. When a person show you who they are, believe them regardless to what their mouth says. Now, you may have heard a saying go something like this. If it walks, squawks, looks like a duck, regardless of what it says, it is a duck. The same is true with people. If a pear tree could tell you that it was an apple tree, and you see pears growing on it, you know that it is a pear tree because of its fruit. When a person tells you who they are by their actions, regardless to what their mouth is saying, believe their actions. Their actions tell a lot about their soul, who they really are. Now, let's take a look at the word soul. It is the spiritual principle embodied in human beings. It's a person's total self. It's your core. Is who you really are. The moral and emotional nature of human beings. The Hebrew has a word which means creature that breathes. And we find in God's word that God breathed into man's nostrils. And he became a living soul. And we find in politics, we are seeing, we are hearing things that we have never seen before. But I say, watch their actions. Many of us today are anxious, not knowing what the outcome is going to be. But God knows. Oh, yes, he does. Now, this reminds me of a friend sitting with another friend watching a movie that one of them have seen before, perhaps more than one time. The friend who has seen the movie knows the punchline, knows the outcome, knows the villains and the good guys, and knows the victims and the victors. God knows the outcome. He knows those who are his. Those whose names were written in the Lamb's book of life. Who was chosen in him before the foundation of the world to be holy. Thank you, Jesus. Just as your friend is eagerly watching the movie with you, Although they have seen it before, God is eagerly participating in your life struggle to help you to become what he knows 
that you are capable of becoming. Isn't that wonderful? Although God already knows the outcome, yet he is in your day-to-day -day struggle with you, helping you to become all of that that you are capable of becoming. Can you tell him thank you right now? Now, for those of you whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life, the message is still the same to you as it has been down through the years. It is not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Oh, yes. Now, repentance is a change of heart, a change of mind, and turn from the evil of your doing and turn to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior through faith. Now, as we look at our wider society, who would think that the most senior officials in our government will be the ones leading the charge of criminal activity? Miss information, voter suppression, cruelty to children, division and racism, pitting Americans against each other instead of unifying us. My mother taught me a long time ago, divided we fall. Together we stand. We are seeing plagues such as Corona-19 that we have never seen before and do not know how to deal with it. These are strange times. Let me say that again. These are strange times. <clears throat> Now, before the shock of one news calamity is over, we are confronted with another and another. Who would ever think that our government would adopt a policy that inhumanely caged children and separate them from their parents without any remorse? We find... <clears throat> In Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20, it tells us, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and clever in their own sight. Lord have mercy. Woe to those who, watch, now listen to this carefully. Woe to those who acquit the guilty for a bribe, but deny justice to the innocent. Lord have mercy. These are strange times. These are strange times. Satan is definitely after the soul of our nation. Now, let's take a closer look at the word woe. That word woe means great sorrow or distress. Misery, wretchedness. Sadness. I say to you, the day of reckoning is coming. Oh, yes, it is. I'm reminded of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 around verse 10. The Bible tells us, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. 
so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in this body, whether good or bad. I say to you, it is coming up again. Now, it is good to preach prosper, prosperity messages. Let me say that again. It is good to preach prosperity messages. And we do. But I have a question for you. What good is prosperity without Christ? First things first. We find in Mark chapter 8 around verse 36. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Matthew backs it up and telling us, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Whether it's a car, whether it's a house, whether it's clothes, whether it's money, seek first the kingdom of God and watch what God will do in your life. As seen in our text, Satan wants your soul. Oh, yes, it does. He wants your soul. He wants the soul of this entire nation. He wants to commandeer your thoughts. Oh, yes, he does. He wants to, dis he wants to dispute with God about your final resting place. Oh, yes, he does. He accuses you every day. Oh, yes, he does. But thank God, Micah the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, said, the Lord rebuked thee. Thank you, Jesus. Now, those of you who are in Christ Jesus, you don't have to worry where you will spend eternity. Lord, I thank you. I don't have to worry where I will spend eternity. I'm reminded of Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now, right now, where I stand, right now where you stand, where you sit, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. I give you the glory right now. Thank you, Jesus. Those of you who are in Christ Jesus, your soul is protected. Let me say that again. Those of you who are in Christ Jesus, your soul is protected. We find in St. John chapter 10, around verse 27 through 30, the Bible tells us, my sheep, listen to my voice. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I know them, and they follow me. <clears throat> I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Father, I thank you. Thank you. I feel safe right now in Jesus Christ. I feel protected right now in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I give praise to our God. Jesus went on to say, my father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. Oh, I praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. As I think about the soul of man and the soul of this nation, the soul is who you really are. We are a nation founded and built on biblical principles. 
In God, we trust. In God, we trust. Not in Mr. or Miss politicians we trust. In God, we trust. Not in Mr. or Miss politician we trust. My trust is still in God. I trust my soul to God's care. What about you? Lord, I thank you today. If anything or anybody rises up and try to snatch us from God, God's word, hallelujah, is like a hammer. Thank you, Jesus, that breaks the rocks in pieces. And God's word is able to crush the opposition. Father, I thank you right now. Thank you, Jesus. God's word is like, amen, a hammer. Oh, yes, he's able to uproot, pluck up, and tear down everything that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. Lord, I thank you. I praise you right now. I give you the glory. I find in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 through 5, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, Lord, I thank you, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down, amen, arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself Amen, against the knowledge of God. Lord, I praise you right now. And what does God's word do? It bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of God. Father, I thank you. Oh, I praise you. I give you the glory right now. I magnify you. Oh, yes, I do. Now, Satan will try to snatch away your morals. Oh, yes, he will. Satan will try to snatch away your scruples. Especially those of you who are on your own for the first time in life. He will tell you to forget the things you were taught as you grew up in church and the word of God. He will tell you you need to know the world. And I am the one to teach you. That's what Satan will tell you. He will tell you, amen, forget about all that church stuff. Forget about all that home stuff that you were taught. You need to know about what's happening in the world. And I'm the one to tell you all about it. I can show you a thing or two. Satan is after your soul. That's what he wants. There's a battle for your soul today. The battle for your soul is real. Oh, yes, it is. We find in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16 through 17. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, amen, is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away. Oh, yes, it is. And the less of it. But he who does the will of God, hallelujah, abides forever. Lord, I thank you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Now, don't you know that as long as you are in the will of God, and doing the will of God, you are invincible until God releases you. Listen to what God said to Jacob. He said, I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. And I believe that God will do the same thing for you. He said, I will not leave you until I have done for I have promised you there is a degree of invincibility that God, amen, puts upon you when you are doing his will. We find those words in Genesis chapter 28 around verse 15. 
Lord, I thank you right now. Although there's a battle for the soul of this nation, and there is a battle for your soul, amen, good versus evil, Satan has no choice, but you do. Oh, yes. If you have a will and a desire to come to Jesus, you can come regardless to the tug of war that is going on in your flesh. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I said regardless to the tug of war. And I have here, amen, some of you know about, amen, the tug of war. How one person on one side and another person on another trying to pull one across the line. I'm saying to you right now, there's a tug of war going on in your life. Sending is, amen, trying to battle God for your soul. Good versus evil. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But I thank God today that Jesus Christ is on my side. Hallelujah. I got to be a winner. If you're on, on the side of Jesus Christ, you're on the winning side. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, yes, you are. Hold on to Jesus. Hold tight. Amen. Hallelujah in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us the spirit and the bride say come. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 And let who hears say come. Thank you, Jesus. Let the one who is thirsty come. I can, I can see Jesus right now. Telling old Satan, Satan, if they have a will, amen, let them come. If they have a desire to come to me, let them come. You have no choice. Satan has no choice. He got to let you come. Jesus already gave him the law. Let the one who is thirsty come. And the one who wishes take the free gift of water, amen, of life. Let them come on. Lord, I thank you right now. I say Satan don't have a choice. He got to let you come. Because Jesus already said, let you come. But you have a choice. Amen. Make Jesus your choice today. As stated earlier, the soul comprises the mental abilities of a living being. Reason, character, feeling, consciousness. Memory, perception, thinking, and the like. Satan wants to make you into his image. Amen. Oh, yes, he does. I said Satan wants to make you into his image. His image of greed. His image of selfishness. Self-centeredness. Instead of you being in the image of Jesus Christ. The greatest battle for your soul is not with sticks and stones. The greatest battle for your soul is not with guns and knives. The greatest battle for your soul is not on some dark street in urban cities or on some foreign soil in another country. The greatest battle for your soul is waged in your mind. While we lay in our beds, watching TV, or while we are at the dinner table, or reading a magazine, or while we are at work, or while we are sitting up in church right here in America. That's where the battle for your soul is going on, right here in your mind, as you carry on your daily activities. Now listen, you do not have to be bound or worry about losing the battle of, over your soul. I am reminded of what the eagle-eyed prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah 63 and 1. He said, who is this coming from Bozrah? A man with dyed garments on. A man. Who is this coming from Eden? Oh, yes, from Bozra with dyed garments on. This is the one who is glorious in his apparel, 
traveling in the greatness of his strength. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I praise you right now. Who I speak in righteousness. Amen. The Bible said he is mighty to save. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I say to you, this Jesus, he's mighty to save. Oh, yes, he is. You may be wrapped up. Oh, yes, tied up and tangled all up in a web of sin. But I got a God who's able to save today. His name is Jesus. You may be wrapped up in a web, as I said, of sin and corruption. But thank God today, he is mighty to save. My God is able to break in every chain. He's able to break you loose in the name of Jesus in that wonderful church. I thank God I'm free. I'm free in Jesus. I don't have to worry about Satan snatching him in my soul. Hallelujah. I'm free in Jesus. I've chosen Jesus Christ. And thank God Jesus has chosen me. Every chain set up on you can be broken by the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody ought to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to know, can you praise him right now? Can you give God the glory right now in the name of Jesus Christ? I praise him right now. Thank God for breaking every yo, every chain. My soul is at peace today. Hallelujah, I'm on the Lord's side. And the Lord is on my side. What about you today, church? I praise God. I praise God. God is calling for an overhaul of our minds. We find amen in Romans chapter 12, around verse, amen, 1 and 2. It teaches us that we are to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let God know. Let God know that you are ready to turn from your old habits and ways and accept him as your Lord and Savior. Jesus said, you must be born of the water and of the spirit. Now, we can baptize you right here in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God stands ready to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. We praise God for you. May God bless you. May God keep you is our prayer. We are about ready now to prepare for our Holy Communion. We ask you, amen, to... Get your communion. We're about ready to receive our holy communion. May God bless us right now. I want to turn to a passage of scripture that is found in the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians around verse 23. The Bible says, for I receive from the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. Oh, yes, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as oft as he drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till it come. The Bible tells us, therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily, Many will be guilty of the body and blood of Jesus. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats 
and drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. I say to you right now, right where you are, in the safety of your home, wherever you may be, pause, steal away, and ask God to forgive you of any and everything that you ever said or done. Ask him for his forgiveness. Give thanks how he died on Calvary's cross. This is definitely not a time to be laughing and kidding and joking. But we see this bread by faith as the body of Jesus Christ. We see this fruit of the vine by faith as the blood of Jesus Christ. And this is definitely no joking matter. You may pause now as you go before the Lord in prayer. Those of you who have your Holy Communion at home, let us look beyond ourselves. Our Father God, in the mighty and awesome name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you now. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you for your blood that was shed on Calvary's rugged cross. We thank you, O oh God. Hallelujah for your death, your burial, and resurrection. Lord God, I thank you now. And Father, we are definitely looking forward to your coming. Let us all together now eat of the body of Christ. Let us all together drink of his blood. We ask you to take a pause and reflect on what just took place. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I say to you, Jesus stands ready to save you. For further discussion concerning your salvation, please call me at 678-759-8989. Eight, nine. Hopefully, something has been said this day to encourage and bless you. As we close out, I want to say a, a special prayer for our students and our teachers on this, who are going back into the school, who are going back into the system, knowing that there's so many obstacles and challenges out there, I want you to bow your head and pray with me at this time. Dear Heavenly Father, I come now to ask your grace and mercy upon every teacher and student and those with whom they have to do as they return to school, cover them and protect them from all harm and diseases. Please allow them to have a productive year according to your grace and purpose. Father, as many as have accepted you, let us all be able to say, I belong entirely and solely, spirit, body, and soul, to the Lord Jesus Christ. I have been crucified and raised with Christ and am now sitting with him in heavenly places. Given that privilege, I eternally and completely sign myself over to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
It is my intention that our Lord Jesus will have full control of my life. And to that end, I will pray daily. I do all this in the name Lord Jesus Christ. And by his absolute authority over all things, rulers, authorities, and powers. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I confess Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of my life. This is the name Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who was born of a virgin, walked the earth in the flesh for 33 years, and died on the cross for my sins. He is the Son of God and was both God and man while here on this earth. He died on the cross for my sins, and he now sits on high, amen, at the right hand of the Father, and is indeed my Lord and my Master. I kneel in total submission to him. May God bless all of us now, and may God keep us is our prayer. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you all.